I want to bring in Wyoming Republican Senator John Barrasso, member of the Republican leadership, as well as a member of the Foreign Relations Committee and chairman of the Committee on Environmental and, P and Public Works. Senator, good morning. First, was it the right move for General Flynn to resign? Uh, yes, it was, Stephanie. Thanks so much for having me. National security is our first responsibility. Uh, if the national security advisor does no longer have the, the trust of the president or vice president, it's important that he would offer his resignation, and he has, and it was important for the president to accept it. Do you think there should be further investigation to determine, for example, whether General Flynn initiated the discussion of sanctions at the president's direction, President Trump's involvement here? Well, I understand the FBI and the Department of Justice are looking into that. I would expect that members of Congress and the House and the Senate and the appropriate committees will look into it uh, as well, because we need to focus on the nation's security. And when I think of that, I want to make sure that our country is safe, it's strong, and it is secure. Are you concerned that General Flynn was not acting alone? Yes, General Flynn is now leaving the building, but the fact that the president's own uh, Kellyanne Conway, just hours before uh, General Flynn uh, submitted his resignation, she went on television and said he has the full support of President Trump. So it does have people wondering what exactly is going on inside that White House. Well, again, I wasn't privy to those discussions or those conversations, but I will tell you when it comes to Russia, uh, I don't trust Vladimir Putin at all. He does not have our interest at heart. His values are very different than ours, and there are a lot of reasons to not trust Vladimir Putin, whether it's Crimea, Ukraine, the involvement in the U.S. elections, the cyber attacks, his relationship with Iran. I think we have to be very, very cautious in dealing with Vladimir Putin. He cannot be trusted. I realize you have to walk a fine line, but does it give you pause that that sentiment that you have just shared about Vladimir Putin has not been echoed by President Trump. And time and again, he's been offered opportunity to speak about Vladimir Putin. And we really haven't heard anything except that he's a strong leader. And in fact, President Trump has called him smart. Well, all I can do is speak for myself, and I have very strong feelings about what's happened to the point uh, that I signed a letter to Donald Trump before he was inaugurated president asking to supply the Ukrainians with lethal weapons that they could use against Russia. So on this, I'm, I'm very solid, secure, and I just need to make sure that the country is safe and secure and strong. We haven't heard much about that full-scale investigation into the Russian hack. Earlier this morning, Tom Friedman of the New York Times said the Russian hacking that took place during the election was on the scale of a Pearl Harbor, a 9-11. Would you agree with that? Because there has been so much noise in the last few weeks, it almost seems like that investigation into the election hacking has been sidelined. Well, I, I think that overstates it, but I think President Obama's response was too little, too late. You know, I think you have to have decisive action against true threats, which is what uh, happened with the hacking situation. We did not have a timely response. We did not have a forceful response. You know, it was a, a, a reply by the president, but I think you need a forceful, decisive response to deter additional action in the future. We haven't had that. I am supportive of sanctions. I would like to go further. If you really want to deter actions, you know, what you do, you have some capacity, and we have incredible capacity in the United States. You have to have a commitment to use that capacity, and you have to communicate that commitment. And I think Donald Trump is going to com communicate our commitment and capacity to stand up around the world. But is it too little too late? Maybe it was too little on, on the part of President Obama, but is it too late? Is it too late for a full-scale investigation into that hacking? Because we really haven't heard President Trump call for that. Well, there's continuing to be efforts to prevent additional attacks, but I think in the whole area of cyber, again, it's not just Russia. We see this around the world, the, the cyber attacks that are coming at the United States. It's China, it's North Korea, who have been very aggressive uh, with cyber as well as what they're doing uh, with uh, their nuclear testing. The world continues to be a very dangerous place. National security needs to be our number one concern. It's important that we get a new national security advisor. The three names that, uh, that you just had on the show, uh, each of them would do an exceptionally good job and I think provide additional confidence in the American people that, are secure, that we will be safe and secure. Another danger that we face that we can't see like cybersecurity is dangers around the world in terms of our environment and climate change. Can you speak uh, to concerns that are out there about Scott Pruitt getting confirmed as the next EPA administrator? Yeah, I think Scott Pruitt is an excellent choice to be the administrator of the Environmental Protection 
agency. He's had thorough vetting in the committee, answered over a thousand questions. His vote will be this week. He is somebody who is attorney general in Oklahoma, fought to protect the environment, fought to strengthen uh, the economy, as well as stood up for states' rights. The EPA really has lost its way over the last eight years, caused and been involved and responsible for some of the greatest environmental disasters that we've had in this country. It's time to modernize, update, strengthen, uh, and improve the EPA and, and eliminate so many of the the regulations that the last administration in its regulatory rampage has put forth that has hurt our economy, hurt our ability to use American energy. Senator, before we go, assuming Scott Pruitt is confirmed, your message to Americans out there who are worried that we will now have a climate change denying EPA. Well, that's not what he testified to in the Senate. He testified that he did believe that climate change is real. He believes we can have a healthy, strong economy at the same way, at the same time, protect our environment so that we have clean air, clean water, clean land. That's what the American people want. It's not one or the other. We can have both. Before you can have a job, you've got to have a clean planet. Thank you so much for joining me this morning, Senator. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Stephanie.